This is the MNT ZZ9000, a graphics card for classic Amigas. We're talking the Amiga 2000, 3000 or 4000, anything with a Zorro 2 or 3 slot. Now, this card does a lot more than just graphics. It does scan doubling. It has an Ethernet on board. It has an ARM processor at 666 MHz on an FPGA. It has Ethernet. It has USB support. So it's an absolutely amazing card. They've just done 100 on the initial batch, and they're on to the second batch. So if you want to get hold of one of these, I suggest you guys pre-order. And as you can see, it comes packaged nicely with a manual, which is really more than I expected. I expected it just to be kind of a link to a little PDF and it comes with some stickers and branding which is absolutely fantastic and now this is the card itself great to have a modern upgrade for the old big box Amigas this is your micro SD slot for updating the firmware the USB the Ethernet and the HDMI this is the board you need to have it working on Zorro 3 the Zorro 2 versions won't have this it's the FPGA ARM processor and this I assume is the 1 gig of RAM. If you're an owner of a big box Amiga you'll know how hard it is to install cards so I'm going to show you this one. Now first I've been told to put some insulating material on top of the RAM so the board doesn't actually touch it and short out and I'd suggest coming from this kind of extreme angle and this is the way that you're going to be able to get it in. Get the end in first. Now, what I like to do is push this middle section in. And you need to be a bit wary of this middle section because sometimes it can actually start to get loose and you don't really realize it. It looks like the card's been fully pushed in. So just push it in all the way. There you go. And just check. You see there, there was a little bit of movement and that's in solidly. Now, you need to apply quite a lot of pressure to this and make sure that it's actually stuck into the corner. And then you've got the metal plate and you need to line the metal plate up so it actually slots into this tiny bit. But you've got to put some proper pressure in there. You'll see I'm really pushing it. And it's a scary thing to do with a brand new card, but um, if you've ever tried to install a video toaster, you know what I'm on about. There you go, just a couple of pushes. And there we go, the card is nice and snug. Make sure the insulation materials over the RAM and I suggest you do that as well. It's amazingly easy to update the firmware. You just need long nails and you basically pop out the micro SD, update the firmware, pop it back in and then your card is running on the latest version. As this card's just been released, there's a few features which haven't been activated yet. So the one gigabyte of RAM isn't available, the USB isn't available, but the Ethernet is, the ARM code's working, and this absolutely beautiful scan double is working. Now, I've had many cards for my Amiga 4000. I've had a Picasso, I've had an Opal Vision, I've also had an Amiga 600 with a Vampire on it. And this feels a lot more stable than any of those systems and a lot more responsive. Now, the way you install it is you install Picasso first and then you just install the software on top of that and the screen modes will enter Workbench straight away and you will have amazing options like 1920, by 1080 and 32 color bit. It's just insane how you can kind of run these with hardly any lag. I'm on an 040 with a 16 megabyte system. So let's take a more detailed look with a direct capture from the HDMI itself. So this is a direct capture of Workbench running at one of those higher screen modes. And as you can see, it just looks absolutely fantastic. And this is without any kind of speed boost or anything like that yet. So I can't imagine what it's going to be like when they add the addition of one gigabyte of RAM. I think I'm probably going to lose my mind. Now, I did find a glitch, which was kind of every... About eighth time I reset my Amiga, I get this kind of blurred double vision thing. Now, I don't know if that's not me putting the card in properly or having stuff seated in. 
Um, but hopefully they might be able to sort that out with a firmware update, but it was really no issue. You just cold boot again. So the main thing that everybody wants to see is how does it run AGA software? So this is an AGA piece of software, WHD load, and it's going to automatically switch and you will notice nothing. There you go. It's just switched. And that is absolutely beautiful compared to stuff like the Rate auto switcher that I used to see, or even the Picasso would have a little kind of clunk before it switched. This just works beautifully. And as you can see, this is all footage AGA coming straight out of the machine. And it just looks stunning watching these kind of later demos, stuff that was for the O40 machines, the O60. I think this card's fantastic and I would be happy with just these features anyway, but all the extra stuff coming, oh my God, I can't wait. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep doing little review videos of this card and updating you on the latest firmware updates and what we've got working. Thanks for watching. Please like and please subscribe.